So you just picked up the Sony FX30, which means you probably invested a little bit of money into kitting it out, making sure you get the right lenses, making sure you get the right audio and everything else that you need to do to set your camera up for filmmaking. But now it's time to actually make some of that money back. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you 10 different ways that you could use a Sony FX30 to make a little bit of money back on your investment. We'll get there. Now, the first thing that you can do and most people do is actually making videos for small and local businesses. The reason why you could do this on the Sony FX30 is because you're going to have everything from the audio imports from the top panel for really good audio. And you could also use a 10 bit downsampled footage in order to get really high quality content. So the visuals and the audio is going to match. On top of that, you can use 4K 60 in a kind of dodgy 4K 120 frames a second. And you could also use that to get your B-roll because most small business video is going to be interview and B-roll, which means that that makes the camera incredibly easy to start generating some business by working with your local brands. I'm gonna be a little bit jealous of my American friends here, but you could actually rent the Sony FX30 out to other creators and make some money when you're not working. There might be some weeks, especially when you're starting out, where you might not have a client gig coming up, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't make money with your camera without you having having to press record. You could actually use things like ShareGrid in order to post your camera up, or you could store it at a rental house in order for other people to rent your camera, and then you can take a cut of whatever they pay for based on whatever rental fee you have for your kit. Oftentimes, people with more expensive cameras will usually put it in a rental house or they'll rent it privately, and even when they're not working, the camera's still making money. Now, number three is gonna be something that you might not have thought about on the Sony FX30, but also I'm not gonna tell you to do it in the same way that people usually do. And that's going to be stock footage. Now you could send all your footage over to stock websites and that's a really decent way of making money over a long period of time. But sometimes some things I actually have to do is I actually get stock footage for different companies. In fact, I've had retainers before where I only got the stock footage for them to use for their ads and I was only in charge of the image capture. The good thing about that is I don't have to worry about editing or post-production and once the job is done, I could take my money and I can go home. This is also a really great way to get used to your camera and your lenses in general. Now, if you're somebody that's just starting out or you need a little bit of practice, getting stock footage is a great way to do that and you can get paid while doing it. And you don't have to worry about all the other stuff that happens after the shoot. Now, whether you like it or not, social media is going to exist forever, which means that you can use your brand new camera that has incredibly high quality and great audio and you can make UGC content. Now, one recommendation I would do if I started all over again was I would get more on social and get more into the social media side of things because it does help you pad the stats financially in terms of being able to make content and make some money while working with other brands. Now, UGC content is incredibly easy to do, especially for people that use camera gear for their freelancing. I've actually done a couple of UGC ads for different companies and it's cool because I actually use the stuff. Being able to talk about the tools that you use for your trade and get paid for, it seems like a perfect scenario in any situation. So being able to do UGC ads for different companies via social media on TikTok or Instagram or even here on YouTube is a great way to get started making more money and you get to use your camera a little bit more, making you a little bit better every single time you do it. Now, number five, is going to be doing behind the scenes footage and not necessarily your own, but working with other brands and other production companies, getting behind the scenes footage for them. Now, I get it. It's not the most sexy thing in the world. You're not the forefront. You're not the center of attention, but getting behind the scenes is not only a very valuable asset to a lot of filmmakers. It's a job that a lot of people don't necessarily jump to you, but if you're good at it, you actually can make a decent amount of money. Now, this isn't necessarily limited just doing video. The Sony FX30 also takes really great photography. So if you want to get behind the scenes stills or behind the scenes video, using a combination of both is a great way to help your business and it's also a way to fast track getting on set. The more opportunity you get to be around DPs and directors and producers and be actually in the field, whether it's a BTS or if you're a grip, it becomes one more step that you get to be able to learn what's going on on set and eventually when your number's called, you're actually coming to it from a place of experience rather than a place of stress and confusion. Now, number six, if you haven't noticed is, well, YouTube. Now. There are some filmmakers that demonize YouTube and think that it's just a fad or people that should be in filmmaking shouldn't be in YouTube, whatever the case is. But I'm gonna say as somebody that's an active freelancer for the last couple of years, being on YouTube has opened up a ton of opportunities. I've been able to get different jobs from this YouTube channel. I've been able to do brand deals where I don't necessarily have to say yes to every client call that I have, especially if it doesn't fulfill things financially. I've been able to do so many things and actually practice my craft by using my YouTube channel to do that. And if you start really doing well on YouTube, then you're gonna get things like AdSense and affiliate marketing if that's the way you want to go or sponsorships if that's the way you want to go. There's a variety of different ways that you can monetize on YouTube and using the Sony FX30 to do that for the last year and some change has actually been a big level up and it's actually given me a lot of freedom to not have to do client jobs that eventually are going to run me down. We talked about behind the scenes photography but I don't think it's too far fetched to say that you could do normal photography on the Sony FX30 as well. Now all the rage right now for a lot of people in the APS-C market is going to be the A6700 and I don't know if you guys were 
forgot, but the A6700 and the Sony FX30 do have the same sensor. Now, you might not have all the bells and whistles and photography features on the Sony FX30, however, it does take a very similar image between one and the other. That means you could actually get some small photography jobs, be it BTS or maybe even doing a portrait shoot if it's only going to get shared to social media. This camera is not only going to give you great image quality in terms of video, but it's also going to give you really good photos too. Now, number eight is going to be live streaming. Now, this kind of goes in the same boat as YouTube, where some people don't think that people in filmmaking should be live streaming. However, if you see the guys on Twitch and Kick and even YouTube itself through Super Chats, they make a ton of money over a longer period of time. I start to find that live stream is a way of building community, and a lot of times when you build community, the money seems to follow as long as you're providing value. I actually like doing live streams myself, and I'm starting to do them every single week, not necessarily for the money aspect of it, but I just like talking, to be honest with you, and this is a way to get it out in a way that I don't annoy everybody because you could just leave if you don't like it. But all in all, you can use a Sony FX30 as an incredible live streaming tool by just using the camera, an audio source on top, and one of these fast USB-C cables. Now, not to beat a dead horse, but I did actually shoot a live stream podcast with DeAndre Hopkins for the I Am Athlete podcast as well. I said podcast a lot. But when I had the A7 IV, the FX3, my FX6, the Sony FX30 came through because it's the only camera that has a webcam utility in the fashion that it does. So that way it can capture up to 1080p and I can capture audio in camera without needing anything external. Now, number nine is kind of the easy one, and it's going to be weddings and events. Most people that start off in photography and video are going to start off in weddings because there's a certain season for it, it's incredibly busy, and you make a decent amount of money coming into it. You could also do things like corporate events as well because those are companies that have the money to spend because they well need to. But using this for weddings and events is great because the camera is small, it's mobile, you're still able to get audio on it while you're using a gimbal, you're going to get that 10-bit codec, and you're going to get a variety of shooting modes to make things look cinematic. What's also nice is that this does have a dual base ISO at 800 and 2500, so if things get a little bit darker, you could hedge your bets on actually having some pretty decent stuff. Now, I get it, it's not the FX3, it doesn't have 12,800, but you don't have an extra $2,500 to spend, so it doesn't make a difference anyways. Essentially, for the FX30, when you're starting out, doing weddings and events is a great way to fast track yourself into actually making some content and earning some money, and with weddings and events, to be completely honest, they're not that hard to edit in post-production. Now, this last one is actually one of the most lucrative ways to use a camera like a Sony FX30 to earn some income, except you're gonna need a couple of fans. Okay, maybe you'll only need one fan. Okay, I'm actually just telling a lie. But number 10 is actually gonna be a B cam operator. Now we've talked about BTS, and we've talked about small business video, but the Sony FX30 can also match up to other cameras. So if you are called onto a set where you might not be the headliner, but you're also gonna be a camera operator that's going to act as a second angle or as backup for someone who's gonna have an A camera. This is something that's not to be slept on. Because the Sony FX30 has such great quality coming at it at the price that it does, you're able to back up some of your friends that might be farther along in their filmmaking journey as a B cam. Now, B cams might include doing two angles in an interview, or you're doing a scene where you only have one chance at it, so it's better to have two cameras. But being a B camera operator is a great way to earn a little bit of money, and you don't have the stress of actually having to do the post-production, the concepting, and all that other stuff, but you still get that experience while you're on set. Now, in exchange for giving you 10 different ways to make yourself a ton of money using the Sony FX30, I'm not going to take a percentage. But what you can do is you could like, you could comment this video, and you could also share it with some of your friends that might have picked up a Sony FX30, or it kind of goes without saying, you could probably use a lot of these with any camera. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, or at the very least, you learned a couple of things, or well, well, 10 things, about how to make money using a camera like a Sony FX30 for somebody starting out, or someone who's a little bit into it, but you need a new way to make some extra cash. That being said, if you want to see another video, probably on the Sony FX30, we're starting this whole beginner thing, or I'll leave it on the screen. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.